verses 1 through 20. Just out of curiosity, out of a show of hands, is it anyone's first time reading the birth of Christ account? Is it anyone's first time reading in Luke, or any account for that matter, the story of the birth of Christ? I'm just curious to see if we have anybody. It's okay if it is your first time. We certainly, certainly, we're so glad it will be. But I think it's a story or an account that, a lot, a lot of people have heard. And oftentimes in the accounts that are familiar, sometimes they become a little more the more challenging because you're like, yeah, it's Christmas. I know Jesus was born, born of a virgin, whoop de doo No, it's a big whoop de doo It's a very big deal. So we encourage you. Get your Bibles out, follow along. Uh, up here on the screen, the title to the morning's message, The Birth of Joy. And I encourage you, I get it, some of you do use your phones for, um, for your Bibles. But please, for this hour, give Jesus one hour of undistracted your attention. Just put all your thoughts aside for the day, all the cares and concerns for the day. Put it all on stop. Just for Jesus right now as we celebrate his birthday. Join me in a word of prayer as we get started. Father, we thank you for this glorious day. Lord, the day that you came down from heaven to be born so that you would die for us. Your name means you will save your people from their sins. We rejoice in that, that we can be forgiven. That there is heaven awaiting those who have been forgiven. Lord, we thank you for your marvelous act of kindness, mercy, grace, all of the above that you extend towards your creation which has fallen away since Adam and Eve. Lord, we are born in sin. And we need a Savior. Thank you for being the Savior of the world. And I pray, Father, you would draw all hearts to you today as we celebrate you. Christ is born in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. say it again. It's called triple amen service today. Just so you know, we don't take a, an offering here. Prayer box is by CJ over in the corner. So if you feel led to give, you do it because you're a joyful, want to give. But we don't pass anything out if you're new. Um, maybe that might shock some people. It has. I've seen people come in. What do you mean you don't pass a plate? Yeah, because we don't want your money. We want you to get saved. We want you to follow Christ with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's what we want. Join me as we read Luke chapter 2. It's the first 20 verses. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his engaged or betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the upper room. Your translation might say in. Now there was in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Not just joy. What does it say in your Bibles? Great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came, notice, with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things which they had heard and seen as it was told to them. The birth of joy. Our focus today in this account is going to be on that word, joy. Because as you can see in verse 10, it says it's great joy. If you circle the word for great, megas. It's a mega joy. Where is your joy found today, family? And how much joy do you have? When you walked in these doors... Were we doing spiritual backflips so excited about Jesus Christ? What he's done? What is he doing? What's he going to do? The account opens up, first seven verses, joy is born. Take a look at verse six and seven. So it was, while they were there, the days were completed for her, that's Mary, to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, a feeding trough. Because there was no room for them in the inn. Think about this statement. Mary brought joy into the world. She brought the greatest joy into the world. She literally brought God into his own creation. Think about that for a second. Imagine, ladies, men, it's hard to do. Imagine you delivering that baby and you're holding God in your hands. Just imagine for a second. Let me ask you a question. Would you be very careful about how you held God? Right? He cries, oh my gosh, what's wrong with my baby? No, wait, you're God, you can't die, not yet. She brought the greatest news the world will ever know. This world that you and I live in, we're stuck in, planet Earth, it needs a whole lot of joy. Do you know how I know this? Just read the newspaper. Last night, let me just give you the four top headlines. I just pulled open a random newspaper. Ready? Worker allegedly shot and killed colleague because they had a beef, a long-standing feud with one another. Wawa announces a data breach that may impact customers' credit and debit card information. <gasps> Everyone's having a panic attack. I went to Wawa this morning. Oh my goodness. What happened? Wawa, no! Man, strangled to death. Baby found alive. 
Friend arrested on kidnapping charges. How about this? People looking to find some joy in this life, trying to get away. Carnival cruise ships crash into one another in the port in Mexico. Here you are trying to sail away from your troubles and you get into some more. Right? We need joy. This world is going to hell at rapid rate. Does your personal world need some more joy? You're only going to find it in one baby. In one man. The God man. Don't tell me that this world doesn't need Jesus. Read the newspaper. Read your own personal headlines. What would your headline say? The life of Jim Lowenstein. Trouble here. Problems here. Difficulties here. Right? You might have a similar headline. Would you not? Don't tell me that we are not sinners. Two out of the four. Man strangles and worker beats up another worker because they have a anger beef with one another? You can't tell me people, human beings, every one of us, are not sinners. How can you? The proof is in the paper every single day that if you open it up, you will find how sinful men and women really are. The only relief, perhaps, is found in the comics. I used to love Calvin and Hobbes. Despite the headlines, despite what maybe somebody even today here might think, here's the problem. Even though joy was born this day, you already get a picture that the world doesn't want this kind of joy because there was no room in verse 7 for him in the inn. We don't want that. I'm trying to find joy, Jim, in my relationships when I'm immoral. I'm trying to find joy in my alcohol. I'm trying to find joy in my smoke and weed. I'm trying to find joy with my bling and my money. Eventually, Jim, it's going to give me joy. No, it won't. It won't. The world will even look to a spiritual side to find joy. I'm one of those, mm, eventually I will mm, hum my way into a joyous state. No, you won't. Right? Islam seems to be spreading like wildfire. People are converting to all other religions to try and find joy. Sadly, they're mistaken. Sadly, they're misled. Sadly, it's misplaced. Jesus came down so he could tell you you could be forgiven. That he loved you. That he came from heaven all the way to earth. How far is that? Have you ever tracked the miles from heaven to earth? You can't. That's the point. It's a bridge that's so large there's only one man who could connect us. And that's Jesus. He is the bridge to your joy. If you are down and out, desperate, defeated, there's good news today. <laughs> Come on, family, there's good news today. This baby had not a crib. This baby didn't have anything but a feeding trough to be put into. Crowded out, no room. But joy was born that day. Second point. 
pick it up with me in verses 8 through 14. Because we have the birth of joy, you now have joy is going to be announced. Read verses 8 through 14. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings. Tidings simply means good news. Hark the herald angels sing, right? Glory to the newborn king. The message of the gospel first being proclaimed here out loud by these angels to the shepherds. And it says, here's the good news, shepherds. By the way, shepherds were the outcasts in their society. The angels didn't show up in the temple to tell the Pharisees. They didn't show up to show the scribes. They didn't show up to outcasts, shepherds. I like that. Maybe you feel like an outcast. Maybe you've lived your life in such a way where you feel like there's no way God loves me. I'm too far gone. Jim, do you know how many times I've been immoral? Do you know how many cigarettes or weed or shot this into my veins or how many times I've gotten hammered? I couldn't remember the person I was with and what I did that night. Maybe you killed someone. Stole their entire bankroll. Yeah, guess what? Good news for you. You may think you're an outcast, but you're right there with the shepherds. God wants to talk to you. But he also wants to talk to the very religious, good, moral individual here today as well. The person who's grown up, well, so they think, squeaky clean. Jim, I've been a good person my whole life. I went to school. I got a good education. I help people. I do. Guess what? You still need a savior too. The good news that is announced is that, hey, I bring you good news of notice. And I want you to circle because it is the diehard theme of today. Great joy. Mega joy. Which will be to whom? All people. For there is born to you, notice this day, I get it, man. So many people want to debate about what day was Jesus really born? What day is this? You know, I'm glad Scripture doesn't tell us because we would make an idol out of it. We already have. What matters is Jesus was born, right? What matters is how Jesus was born of a virgin. Okay, we've all passed biology 101. In order to have a baby, what needs to happen? A man and a woman have to come together, don't they? It's so simple. Why the whole world did not bow at the feet of his birth amazes me because it was told back in Isaiah that this woman was going to be a virgin. You remember that, right? When you read Matthew's account, born to you this day is a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Matthew's account tells us, and you're going to call his name Jesus. Luke also says the same thing back in chapter 1, verse 31. You're going to call your son, his name is Jesus, because his name means he will save his people from their sin. Can there be any greater news for mankind? No. Can there be any greater joy given to mankind. No, there can't. Okay. They announce it, the angel that is, to the shepherds. And there is born this day the greatest announcement man has ever heard. Think about it this way, family. We're still celebrating his birth, are we not? How many years has passed? Do you celebrate Buddha's birthday? With all due respect, 
Listen, do you celebrate Muhammad's birthday with all due respect? Harry Krishna's, Joseph Smith. You don't. But we celebrate the Messiah's birth for a very powerful, real reason. Because none of those other figures which I mentioned can take your sin away. Oh, you think they point you to God? But here is the birth of God. The Messiah. It's the most powerful thing. It's the most awesome thing. It's the greatest joy message one could have. Verse 12, and this will be a sign to you that you will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Joy is announced. Do you know this joy? I know most of you. I do. And I believe in my heart that you all have experienced this joy. That's one of the things that definitely unites us. It's why we love one another. Because we are all together born again Christians. But there could be someone here today, someone listening. Listen, the swaddling. Do you know what swaddling clothes were? They were these tight clothes that almost made you look like a little mummy. The way you wrapped it and kept them. So some, yeah, guess what? You haven't been swaddled with the love of Christ. You've been swaddled with church. You've been swaddled with religion. You've been swaddled growing and going to Bible study or this and that. But you haven't experienced this joy yet. Does that make sense? You see, you can be here today, sit and go like this. You can say amen, man. but at the end of the day, there are so many that sit in the church and they don't know them. I read this stat to the Bible studies last week. Three to four hundred churches went down every year. They go down every year. They close. Did you know that? Now, there's a whole host of reasons why, but the point that I bring to your attention is, I wonder if it's because maybe they're not saved. They're following a religious organized denomination. I don't know. Maybe that they're playing church. I don't know. Maybe it's because there's a lack of joy, and if we experience this message, then the next point Verses, Eric, if you would, switch to the next point. Joy should be expressed. Listen, the greatest message that's ever been given. The greatest message. Look what it does to the shepherds. So, verse 15. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem to see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came, do you see it, with haste. They hurried. They were excited. They were motivated. They were moved. Does that make sense, family? That's how they began to express the good news that was happening in their hearts. Can I ask you a question? Do we do the same? Are we in a hurry to get in our Bibles? Are we in a hurry to get close to Jesus in our prayer closet? Are we in a hurry to get to church, to fellowship, to spend time with one another, to grow in love together? Are we excited? You see, this is exactly what's happening. If you're not familiar, listen, church in America is becoming about entertainment because they're trying to make you excited somehow, some way. So if we tone down the messages and turn up the dancing and the performance and we do one of these for you, 
You see, the laughter comes and the joy flows. You see, in order to experience this joy that we're talking about, if you want to experience this joy, it cannot be the church that gives it to you. You have to be born again. Would you turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 3? Because we're on the topic of the birth of joy. In order to experience this birth in your life, listen very carefully. John chapter 3. If you're in Luke, it's the next gospel over. So it shouldn't take you too long to find, but page 1351 if you have the study Bibles. In John chapter 3, verse 3, Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he or she cannot see the kingdom of God. Have you been born again, family? Has there been a real radical transformation in your life? If the answer is no, at the end of this service, we will give you an opportunity to have that experience. But listen, otherwise, this news that I'm giving you, you won't rejoice over it. You won't be happy that it says that great joy has come to all people. Let me illustrate it to you this way. Did you know that now they sell a Mountain Dew body wash? <laughs> I'm so excited. My favorite soda is now a body wash. Some of you are like, what are you doing? You see, that news that came to me today, I can't wait. I'm going to the store tomorrow to buy it. Because I want to experience a Mountain Dew body wash experience. I am excited. I know not everyone is. It's okay. Let me try another one. Has anyone, raise your hand, ever been on a cruise before? I love those things. Man, you have to work out hard for a month before because you get on these ships and it's a never-ending supply of cakes, ice creams, foods at all hours. It's nonstop. I remember the first time I went, and the, the, we sat down for our first dinner, and opened the menu, and they're like, okay, what would you like, sir? I'm like, okay, well, I'll take the, the filet, and they're like, that's it? I'm like, what do you mean that's it? Well, you know you can order anything you want. I'm like, I can have all? You mean every single thing? Like, yeah, you can order as everything you want. I'm like, Oh, I heard the angels singing joy to Jim on this cruise. My stomach was saying, no, don't do this to me. I remember waking up, it was like two in the morning. I'm like, oh, I can go get ice cream. This is so awesome. But here's the point. I asked my sister to go on a cruise. Let's take a cruise together. You know what she said? Absolutely not. They're too dangerous. Too dangerous? There's sharks in the water. What if the boat breaks down and now we got to get into the lifeboats? I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, Jim, you know, they're overcrowded with people. I'm like, you trick, tour the islands. Tour the boat. Hey, stay in your cabin, order room service, whatever, right? There's so much to do. Let's just sail away. Let's get away for a couple of days. Here's the point. She hasn't experienced the joy of being on one. 
And you can look at the magazines, the pictures. You can look at a video that gives you a visual tour of the, the cabin that you might have and all the things that you can do. But guess what? Unless you go and experience it, it's just a video. It's just a piece of paper. Sometimes this book is just a book to some. They're not experiencing it. They're not experiencing the joy of, keep it in the context, they're not experiencing the joy of sharing their faith with somebody else. Telling someone the good news. Because they may be, for whatever reason, hey, if I'm lacking joy, if I'm not really in this, and I'm not experiencing God on a regular basis, then why would I want to tell you? If my life isn't being changed on a daily basis, then why would I go to Carmelo and say, yo man, get in your Bible. Get good news. God wants to change you. He loves you. He died for you. He's got so much for you. The good news here is, yeah, guess what? Anyone and everyone can come to Jesus Christ. You can convert from your current belief system today. You can be a diehard atheist and bow your knee and God loves that. You can be a diehard Muslim and convert to Christianity because he died for you. Allah didn't die for you. Buddha didn't die for you. There's only one that says, I love you. I came to show my love. I came to die for you. His name is Jesus. And if you have experienced this, man, the great joy that should well up inside of us on a regular basis to go tell the person next to you at work, on the bus, in the mall, wherever you are. Look at the faces of the people that are shopping today. Look at them. I've seen some miserable, angry looking faces. When we went out, I saw some people, I'm like, man, you don't look like you got any joy. You look like that buying that gift for your mom that, or whoever you're buying it for, that looks painful. Then why are you doing it? You need to be born again to truly experience the joy of worshiping and knowing Jesus. With that being said, back in Luke's account, it says in verse 16 that they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe Lying in a manger. Verse 17. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them. Notice, concerning this child. They begin to tell everyone about this baby boy. I draw your attention to that because they're not commanded to go do it. This isn't a lesson on discipleship. This is a lesson on joy. Just like you saw me share my excitement to tell you about Mountain Dew body wash or let's take a cruise. Get out of this cold. I was just talking to my wife last night. I said, man, a Disney cruise. Oh. Go somewhere warm. Because I'm the first one up. Man, we turn our heat down at night to like 64 degrees. You wake up, you can see your breath in the house. Emily wants to kill me because I always turn it down. She turns it up. I go turn it down. We, we have this war in our home. I'm like, yeah, but I'm paying the bill, so turn it down. That's the trump card. I pay the bills, so hey, listen. Here's an extra blanket. Here's a little space heater for you. Then I get my friends from Florida. 
They shoot me pictures. They're at their swimming pool. I'm like, I have no joy right now. Just lost it all. Out the window it went. <laughs> but they went and they made it known. And what did they know? All they knew, Jesus Christ was born this day, a Savior. Do you see how simple the message is? Jesus came today for you. Are you and I going to tell this message and spread it so it's widely known? Do not assume you think everyone has heard it. Not too long ago at Panera Bread, young girl at the age of 19 said, Hey, she just served me bread. I said, do you, uh, This is good bread, but do you know the bread of life is infinitely better? For what? So well, let me break it down for you real fast. Jesus came. He's God. He died for you. Do you know the gospel? And she goes, I've never heard this message. 19 years old here in Morristown, New Jersey. Not everybody knows, family. Make it known. Not too long ago, we went to the Yellow Submarine. People should pay me for advertising, right? Great hoagies. Oh, my gosh. They do a magical godfather. Do you know what that is? It's a cheesesteak they make with garlic bread. And then they load up with the cheese. and Oh, mm, ah, so good. Right? So the girl serving me says, you know, hey, I like your T-shirt. I had a Jesus T-shirt on. I said, that's awesome. I said, tell me, when, when were you saved? Tell me your salvation story. She goes, what? Saved? What's that mean? Where do you fellowship? What's fellowship? I'm like, man, I'm striking out here. Okay, where do you go to church? Oh, I'm a Lutheran. You're a Lutheran. But you don't know what it means to be born again, I said. And I have no idea what that means. How long have you been going to this Lutheran church? Oh, since I was a little girl. She's now 20-some years old. Do you see the point? You can grow up in a church and not be saved. She thinks she's Lutheran. She hasn't had a conversion. I said, do you read and study your Bible at all? Well, not really. Because it's become a religion. It's become customary. It's become tradition. And that's what's happened with Christmas. It's what happened with so much of our Christianity. It's become traditional and sometimes truth is even left out. So I said, hey, I just want to make sure you're saved. I want to know that Jesus isn't here, but he's here. Because the good news has to get here, family. You see, you have to lay hold and grab Jesus and take him. And he's got to be in your heart. And if you look with me in the epistle, all the way towards the back of your Bible, 1 John chapter 1. It's the epistle of 1 John it's the first four verses as we open up. Page 1575, if you have the study Bibles. 1575. But here's what it says. Ready? That which was from the beginning, which we have heard and which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. Do you see it? Notice what they, you see. They have heard, we have seen, we have looked upon, our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. But notice verse 4. 
And these things we write to you. Why? What does it say? That your joy may be made full. John writes to say, hey, your expression of Christ, the way you express your joy for Christ, if it's genuine, if you're truly born again, if you truly are, you're going to want to put your hands on this. You're going to want to love this and study this. And you're going to want to do this. I know it sounds elementary, but we have a lot of counterfeit Christians. People who even serve in church. I mentioned to you guys, my friend Joel, when I was at a large, large Calvary Chapel back in the day, this guy, seven years serving in Sunday school, he sat at my table as I waited upon him and served him buffalo wings. We got in a conversation, and I said, so bro, tell me your salvation story. He goes, what are you talking about? You have a badge that teaches Sunday school. You don't know what salvation is? He goes, do you know what it means to be born again? No. He goes, I come to church just because the people are nice. This guy was serving. You never know where they're going to be. I don't know where you are. You can come every day and take your seat here, but I have to know your joy factor. Are you saved? That's what Christmas is all about. That's why we celebrate the birth that God would step out of eternity to this ball of dirt because He loved you and I so much. That he was willing to put heaven aside for a short period of time and come down here, open his arms wide, let the nails go in, have his beard plucked from his face, have you touched and handled the word of life? Let me ask it or rephrase it this way. Tell me about your last encounter with Jesus Christ. What verse did you read that made such a deep impact on your life? What person did you share Christ with in recent times? Did it impact your life? Who have you been praying for and seen answers to prayer to that Jesus has impacted your life? Can you do all of those three? Because these are practical ways which we handle. If we have been given the gift of eternal life, and Gabe mentioned it in his opening prayer, it's a gift that's given freely by grace, right? No man can earn it. You can't work for it. You don't deserve it. It's just God's simple love towards His creation. But it leads me, truthfully, because you know I'm all about honesty and truth in this place. Let's be honest. This all sounds fine and dandy. Joy is born. Great joy. The gift of eternal life. But we don't always have joy. Do we? Sometimes we give our joy away. We hand it over to the enemy. Because you're going through a trial, a tribulation, right? What happens to our joy? Well, Hand it over. Why did you hand it over? Is somebody in your life sick? Maybe dying? Yeah, I know it's hard. Is it because you have depression? Live in this world long enough we all have an element of depression. I read you the headlines. They're not inspiring, are they? Did you know? Who here knows who Charles Spurgeon is? Raise your hand. 
Charles Spurgeon in England, he was called the Prince of Preachers. I think he started preaching at the age of like 13 or some really young age. Well, well known. Did you know that man struggled with depression? Big, big time. But he led, he was used by God to lead tens of thousands to the Lord. So you may have not a lot of joy because you say, well, I'm depressed. You say, I'm down and out. You say, this is kicking my butt. This trial, this tribulation, temptation, right? The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And our joy factor goes from the mountain to the valley, sometimes in a matter of minutes. Some Christians go from the baptism to backslidden. And it doesn't take long for it to happen because the joy goes. Which is why my last point comes from the very last verse of this account. And if you look and see what it says, as you go back to Luke chapter 2, it says, then the shepherds, in verse 20, returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen and that they had heard as it was told to them. Joy is kept. When they leave the scene after their mountaintop experience, think of it. Come on, family. Think of it. Angel spoke to you. Wouldn't you be kind of excited too? You just got to look at baby God. You would be kind of excited too, don't you think? And come on, we celebrate when we see babies born just anywhere, anytime. They're beautiful. They're awesome. We're about to have one. The joy of no sleep. Yeah, I'm excited. When you come over for Monday, Thursday, discipleship group, and I'm going to say, Jim, here's some Mountain Dew body wash for you, bro. This will pick you up. But the shepherds don't stay with baby Jesus, do they? They got to go back to real life. They got to go back to their routines. They got to go back to their normal way of living, right? They returned. But it says they kept on glorifying and praising because they didn't want to surrender the joy. They wanted to keep it and keep giving it. And I want to tell you, family, if you struggle today with your joy, you can know Jesus and still be down and out, totally distracted and depressed. Two things I have for you. Go share Jesus today. Play a part of witnessing to someone else. Someone that doesn't know Jesus, guess what? They're going to be depressed for all eternity because they rejected Him. Think about how depressed you may feel right now. Think about it right now. If there's anyone in this room who, when you came here today, you were down, discouraged, depressed, beaten down, tired. You just want to give up life. Maybe even you're mentally suicidal. No joy. The good news for you is if you're saved... Yeah, when we get to heaven, all that nasty stuff is gone, right? Heaven is going to be nothing but joy. So you have a brief time period in which, yes, you may struggle with some of these things. But it doesn't compare to the person who has to do it for all eternity, does it? Secondly, more good news for you. Turn to Psalm 52, sorry, Psalm 51. It's verses 12 and 13. (laughs) 
Psalm 51. Pick it up with me in verse 12. It's critical that you see this. It says, page 718, if you have the study Bibles, Psalm 51, verse 12. Restore to who? Me. What? The joy of your salvation. Notice it doesn't say of my salvation. It's your salvation. The writer here recognizes things are wrong in this person's life. There's sin that needed to be repented of that was not repented of for quite some time. This whole psalm is David. Listen carefully. After he had an adulterous relationship, after he had her husband killed, he lived in that sin for a year. Let me tell you what kills a Christian's joy is when you and I live in deliberate and habitual sin. You won't experience joy. So maybe you're here today because you are on the backsliding side of your faith. I totally get it. This is your prayer today. If Christmas isn't exciting, if the joy of knowing Jesus isn't exciting, maybe it has to do with, well, what are you doing? What sin are you playing with? Or have been toying with? Have been kind of diving back into, right? Because the old nature that we live still wants to do old, bad, nasty, sinful things. Restore unto me the joy. Go back to the day that you said, here I am, Lord, save me. Remember your salvation day? Do you remember it? Do you have that day? Can you stand with me? Look at how verse 13 reads. After we ask the Lord to restore our salvation and uphold me by your generous Holy Spirit, then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. Do you have a joy in your heart for wanting to see sinners come to Christ? If you're focused on you, and if you're living in sin, you're not going to have any care in the world to do so. Today's the day we make it right. Today's the day that you and I truly honor Christ for coming to this world to save mankind. But when you walk out of here today, is your rejoicing going to continue till I see you, Lord willing, next Sunday? Is it going to? Some in your mind may already be thinking, mm, I don't know. I don't even know if I want to come back here. <laughs> I get it. I went to church for a long time and didn't want to go. You know why? Because I wasn't saved. That's just the honest answer. I knew Jesus... Listen, you're all very, very smart people. And you can know Jesus died for your sins in your head. But it won't do any good. It's just a book. You got to know him here. And when he really does get here, you know what he's going to do? He's going to change you. He's going to bless you. He's going to lavish his love upon you. But if you are here today... And I can't tell you why, it's just impressed upon my heart. If you've been living a hypocritical, backslidden, depressed, down and out life, let's pray for you. Please let me pray for you. Come up here. No shame. David lived in it for a whole year. And it got to the point he just couldn't take it anymore. So he tells you and I through Psalm 51, I need to confess that I've lost the joy of being a born-again Christian. I've lost it. And I need it back. And I want it back. I want Christ back where He belongs.
king of my heart, in charge of my life. I'm going to close this out in prayer with my eyes closed, but I mean it. If you're here today, and you're backslidden in any way, you don't have to tell me what's going on, but we're going to pray and we're going to give it back to Jesus. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Because Jesus has a plan for your life, and it's incredible. Jesus has a calling on your life bigger than you think and you know. There's no more time for playing with sin and playing games. Let's get right today. Amen?